Hello, Ken Alton here from Circularity Edge. Thank you for inviting me to speak at Cali Circular. It's an honor and a privilege to be involved in Cali, Colombia again. Today, I have a few minutes to talk to you about circular business models and putting the circular economy into practice in the real world. So let's get started. So I'd like to talk to you about circular business models and putting the circular economy into practice in the real world. It's been two years now since I was last in Cali. I had the privilege to speak at Cali Epicentro de Sorollo y Paz, and I'm happy to be here virtually, but I hope that someday we can be back together again and do more work together. I've been looking to find the answers to sustainability for more than 30 years. Here are just a few photographs of me working on these topics over all this time. And of course, our global sustainability problem dates back more than 34 years, back to when this report was first published in 1987. And the idea, the concept of sustainability was first brought into being. And over the, that time, we've developed now 17 sustainable development goals covering very wide range of different topics and issues on which progress needs to be made. And from this very number of goals that there are, we can see the complexity of the issues and the connectivity of all of the issues. And yet, despite 34 years of working on sustainability, you could say we are now less sustainable than we were back in 1987 when the concept of sustainability was first developed. And of course, you're probably well aware of these simple sustainability concept images. Sometimes people talk about people, planet, profit, or the three E's, ecology, equity, and economy. And I think part of the problem is with the way in which we talk about these concepts. These are in reality simplistic, two-dimensional visualizations, and there's nothing in those concepts about how we solve these very difficult issues. And in reality, it's the economic E that dominates much more than the people or the planet. And we have to take the real world into consideration. Bruce Henderson in 1977 said, concepts are simple in statement, but complex in practice. A concept is meant to just get you to change your perception of something. And so the simplicity of the concept is part of just making that rapid change in, in our paradigm. But the reality of the real world is much more complex. And Jeffrey West, the author of the book Scale said, life, life itself is probably the most complex and most diverse phenomenon in the universe, manifesting itself in an extraordinary variety of forms, functions, and behaviors over an enormous scales. And so when I look at this simple triangle of ecology, equity, and economy, I want to begin to help you think about it in a more complex way. We have to think of it as three-dimensional and also as a fractal, which as we go inside in more depth, we get more and more into the detail that we have to work on in order to solve the problems. And we have to also remember there's a lot of change right now, a lot of talk right now about climate change because the COP meeting is going on in Glasgow in a few days from when I'm recording this. But climate change is not all about energy. Around 70% of emissions are actually coming from resource use making things, selling things, moving things, buying things, using things, and of course in the linear economy, just throwing them away. So it's not all about energy. We have to pay a lot of attention to materials and products and services. And I've developed a, what I call nature's fract fractal life cycle as a way of looking in depth at these issues, starting with creation, growing to maturity, and then declining, to death, and then ultimately to rematerialization or rebirth. This is nature's cycle. And we have to make a parallel cycle to this for all the technical things that we <clears throat> use in our daily lives today. 
And I've done this in a lot more detail, and I'd be happy to share that with you on another occasion. And at the heart of this life cycle is the idea of sustainability. <clears throat> Nature is inherently sustainable. And so we have to understand about life itself and what makes it sustainable in order to answer these questions. And that's what I've been dealing with over the last several years. And so we look at reproduction, we look at growth, coming to peak growth in adulthood, we look at the end of life when we die. And of course, the sustainability is all because nature works on clean energy, uses clean water, it doesn't have persistent bioaccumulative toxins, and it automatically recycles everything in safe cycles. But we don't do this. And so we have to look at this creation, growth, and death in more detail. And we can pass through this with the idea that in nature there is fertilization, then gestation, then birth. Then we have a baby, or in the plant kingdom, we would have a seedling. We have a toddler or an adolescent that grows into an adult. We then begin aging. We decline. We have a point at which there is no death. And then we are rematerialized in the natural world. And this is all done as part of life. And so we have to understand life, which is an open system of chemicals. It's powered by free energy and from sunlight. And nature has a replication system to enable that there is a next generation, that there is sustainability beyond one generation. And so we can look at this way in which nature works and create an equivalent or parallel system for all of our technical things. And as we begin to understand that we have to move from the linear economy, which is the system that's providing and producing all of these negative uh, consequences, unintended consequences, we have to look to new business models, new ways of powering the economy. We have to look for circular supplies. We have to look at recovering resources after use. We have to extend the use period for current products. We have to involve and invent and create new sharing platforms. We don't have to own everything. And we have to look at new ideas instead of selling and buying products. Maybe we can sell and buy and rent even services rather than products, where the ownership of the products that are, that are providing the service stay with the supplier and don't go to the end user. All of these things are now possible. And so we begin to see examples internationally where circular supplies and resource recovery are beginning to be built into these new business models. Here's an example of food waste from bakeries. In Scotland, stale bread was taken from local bakeries and used as a replacement for the usual grains that went into making a beer. And so now there is a new beer, a circular economy, blonde beer, which is actually won major um, awards for its, uh, for its taste, um, which came not from new wheat or new grains, but came from old grains, from the waste, from another process, from another system, from within bakeries. So where else can we find these potential wastes that actually are valuable raw materials that can be used again. This is the basis of circular supplies and resource recovery. Another example is here from uh, Santiago de Chile, a company called Artisan Roast, is a coffee roasting company that supplies roasted, fresh roasted coffee beans to cafes and to hotels. And thinking about circular economy, they began to say, hey, why don't we pick up the used coffee grounds from our customers. And so when they drop off the new coffee grounds, they take back the old used coffee grounds. They clean them, they add mushroom spores to the mix, they repackage them back in the, in the packaging, and now they have a new product that they sell, which is a, a do-it-yourself mushroom growing kit that you have at home. So you grow mushrooms, on your windowsill at home. And this is another example of recovering a resource that was otherwise going to be thrown away, but now becomes a circular supply for a whole other cycle. Again, how many more of these interventions can we make in all of the different supply chains, all of the different businesses and industries of commerce that we have going on inside a city in order to reutilize materials over and over and over again? 
in the Netherlands, there is a, a, a renewed interest in extending the use of existing products. If something breaks or is no longer functioning for some reason, now you can go to a repair cafe, a place where there are tools and people who are good at fixing and mending things. And so instead of just throwing away something like maybe a toaster in your kitchen, you can have it repaired and you can make it last longer. And we don't have to buy and make another toaster. So it's taking some of the use of resources down by making an existing product last longer. One of the most interesting ideas that I'm working on very closely, and I'd be happy to talk to you again on another occasion about, is the idea of sharing economy platforms. This is where we utilize modern technologies and the creation of connectivity through platforms so that you can buy, sell, rent, lease materials that you're not using in your business. Perhaps your business has some assets that it's not using currently, or maybe it has some waste materials that are no longer useful to you, but they could be useful to someone else. So through these platforms, we're able to sell and rent through this two-way marketplace, and we save money, we keep materials and economy flowing locally, it frees up capital, it saves time, and this is one of the new ways, one of the new business models for dealing with the fact that ultimately, all sustainability is local. And then instead of buying products, maybe we can lease them. Do we have to own everything? In, the, in Holland, a company called Mud Jeans, for example, you actually lease or rent your jeans. You don't buy them. You lease them, you wear them. And when you're finished, you send them back. And they have in place existing processes to reutilize those materials over again what are the uses? So changing the mindset from ownership and purchase to leasing and, and renting. And then lastly, I want to talk about the idea of services, not products. So this is a little bit like the jeans example where you're renting the service of the jeans. You're not actually buying jeans as a product. Another example here is Philips Lighting, which isn't selling you light bulbs or light fixtures. It's selling you the amount of illumination that you want in a room or a building. And so you buy your lighting as a service and pay a service fee, but you never own the light fittings and you never own the bulbs. So you never have to buy them and replace them and service them. They are part of the service contract. So again, this is another change in business model that's beginning to be evaluated in more and more areas. And when we look at the whole use cycle, each of these red arrows represents a different intervention point where we can come in and look for opportunities to reuse materials. It starts with design. It goes through procurement, through manufacturing, logistics, into sales and marketing, where we can even have the idea of reselling and repairing and upgrading and sharing. And then at the end of the use of a product, we have to have some back-end logistics. We have to have an alternative to disposal and we can remanufacture we can take back, we can have reverse logistics, we can have extended producer responsibility, and we can recycle and upcycle materials. And this back end of the cycle is what to date has been missing, but we can begin to identify areas where we can put these uh, pieces into place. And so for me to close, um, the question is not any longer how we do this or even where we do it. We have to do it everywhere. And there are ways we can figure out ways for how we do it. The question for me is who's going to do it? I've spent my last 30 years trying to do this and I'd like to invite you to, to join in in Cali. And if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, you can find me um, under the idea of circular economy. Uh, my name again is Ken Alston. It's been a pleasure quickly talking to you and reintroducing myself to you in Cali. And I look forward to uh, coming back to Colombia, to Cali, and to spend time with you and help you if you're going to be joining me as some of the who who are going to do this work. Thank you very much, and I will turn you back to your program.